Tom Murphy, Steve Tasker, and our special guest is Lorenzo Alexander with The Lowdown. Hello, Lorenzo. Thanks for coming in. Oh, yeah. I enjoy it. What's going on? Not much. This good, is it, man. Good week we for you? Yeah, it's been a great week. Uh, you know, obviously coming off of, uh, you know, the, the heartfelt loss uh, last week, um, getting back into the, the, the groove of things and body starting to feel good. You know, it's Friday, feel even better tomorrow, you know, being older. And um, so I'm excited about the week that we put in and be able to go showcase um, out in Nashville in front of a lot of Bills fans. Yeah. Right here's a huge caravan, you know, people from all over the country, from, you know, down south to even from up here that will be driving down for it. You guys worked out in the rain at least two days this week. Was it raining out there today? No, it didn't rain today. It was just cold or colder. It's not yeah. really cold yet. You okay um, working in the rain? I, mean, that, I know yeah, you can it's, it. it's, it's part of it. I mean, at this point in my career, I don't really need to, but we have a young team, and so you still want to make sure guys are out there, you know, catching and throwing balls, uh, wrapping up, and just um, ment your mentality when you're in the rain so you can prepare for that Sunday's game. It's also probably going to rain Sunday. Yeah, I mean, it has a chance to it, so you want to be used to the elements a little bit. I don't know. What I always thought was just give me good condition to practice yeah, and we'll handle That's my it, thought, but right? I understand when you have a younger team, you, you, you try to expose them to a little bit, so at least they're not shocked when they're out in it. We're with Lorenzo Alexander, Bill's linebacker, joins us every Friday at this time. We'll get his keys to the game, the lowdown coming up in a couple of minutes. Um, look, four games in, it's pretty obvious people are, are aware of the fact that this Buffalo defense is really solid, right? Mm -hmm. And even in the loss against New England last week, I mean, that's about as good as defense as any team can play against one, you know, one of the top quarterbacks of all time. Right. And, and you know, we say that and it still wasn't good enough. I mean, right. obviously, the, you know, some of the points that came in um, special teams, there's nothing that we can do about it. But like their defense did, we have to figure out ways to take the ball away and even score and find another score, especially when we're not, you know, scoring a ton of points right now. We always need to figure out a way to take that to another level. And that's what I feel like separates good defenses from great defenses. If you just think about people that have dominated, when you think about the 85 Bears or the Bears from last season or um, think about Denver uh, maybe four or five years ago yeah. or Seattle, those guys were taking the ball away and figuring out the way to score on top of dominating you uh, physically. Mm -hmm. And so that's the next step I see in the progression of this defense is being able to take the ball away and score or, you know, at least put our offense where you know you have a field goal or a touchdown in a couple of plays being on the goal line. I, I guess I've often thought that takeaways are a little bit of a function of luck, though, right? I mean, the ball's got to bounce the right way. Not no? really. I mean, when you think about interceptions, tips and overthrows maybe, but I think we have a mindset, and you even see it around the league, where people are going in tackling people with a mindset of punching the football and kind of tackling at the same time. And I think we need to be able to do that at an even higher level to get more balls on the ground and more opportunities. We had one with Jordan Poyer, but it was on the sideline, so we never had a chance to recover it. Um, so just um, being more mindful about it, and, and, and that's what it comes down to for man-to-man, -man, because you, you may only get one or two opportunities to take advantage of a punch out, and we have to be able to do that. So the 800-pound gorilla in the room is the quarterback thing. Uh, Josh is still not out of concussion protocol. Right. How much thought do you guys have to give that as a defense knowing you might have your backup quarterback on the other side. Any? Not, none at all. For us, the standard is the standard. Um, and if we uh, live up to the, to the standard in uh, our earmarks that we put in for each week, uh, we'll always have a chance to win uh, regardless of who the quarterback is. You know, with that said, uh, we have confidence in, in Matt Barkley. Uh, anytime he's had a, a full week, you know, we think about that Jets game last year he's able to come in and, and do some good things. And so um, it's all about complimentary football, including the special teams, which right. where we haven't played well either. So it's going to take all of us, um, you know, um, whether Matt or Josh is in there to go down there and beat a good Titans team. Do you give – is there anything about if Matt play, Barkley's going to play, is there this kind of thing like, you know what, it's kind of extra rallying point to come through for a guy like Matt? Uh, uh, I don't know if it's extra. I mean, because Matt has been part of our team, right. and, and, you know, he's played. And, and I think I mentioned it earlier in, in the week when somebody was asking me about it. People gravitate towards Matt, so it's not like, oh, here comes Matt. Let's, we got to rally around him and right. give him all the support. Mm -hmm. I think guys just have confidence in him. They see how he prepares. Um, we practice against him, and so we see the balls that he can make. Um, obviously, he, um, you know, Josh is our guy, but if he comes in there, guys aren't like, man, we, whew, we don't have to really play lights out this week. We don't right. have that, that mentality at all, and sure. I haven't felt that at all. You know, it, it's not even a year since Matt Barkley arrived here to be a Buffalo Bill, and I mentioned I had a brief conversation with Sean McDermott today about how in that short time, Barkley has become in some ways kind of a leader, and more, mm -hmm. moreover, he's kind of a, 
uh, it seems like from the outside looking in, he's like an important presence in your locker room. Just always smiling, always yeah. friendly, counselor to Josh and right. I'm sure several others. And right? he's, I mean, obviously he's been around the league for a long time. Yeah. He's played behind some good quarterbacks and has learned a lot of things from different coordinators that he's come in contact with. But he's a high character guy, uh, prepares well, uh, has the ability to play in his league, and I think he just relishes in his role. He knows he's not the guy, but is, that's not he doesn't walk around like that. He prepares like he, he's going to have a chance to start, and then also. Mentors Josh, helps Josh see things on the sideline, you know, whether he makes a mistake or a great play. And then again, guys like myself and other guys in the locker room, you kind of gravitate toward him because he is, he does have that natural leadership quality yeah. about himself because he is a quarterback. What is your thought process? If, say, you're on the other side, you're the Titans and you're, or you play defense, so you could yeah. kind of route about an uncertainty at the other team's quarterback. I know you guys you can't say, listen, we're just going to get ready to play. Right. And really don't, but Probably the biggest difference, obviously, between the two, you would say, um, well, Josh Armstrong is, is crazy, but um, just the, the, mo the mobility of what Josh brings with his legs and, with, and where Matt may be more in the pocket. And so as a guy, you maybe, not, you maybe don't have a spy. Uh, maybe as a, a pass rusher, you feel like you can get a little bit more loose as far as how you rush a guy like that. Um, but I, that's that's probably the first thing that jumps in my mind when you when when I'm attacking these guys. Okay, Josh may take off on us. Matt, you think he's going to probably be somewhere? If he does break out, we can get to him. All right, Andrew yeah. Alexander in studio with us. Let's talk about the quarterback you will go up against, uh, Marcus Mariota, this week, second overall pick. Uh, what four or five years ago? Right. Um, I know there's talent there, but man, sometimes you got to sit through a lot of bad plays to see the talent on display. That's my <laughs> amateur opinion. You might not right. agree. Well, I'm, uh, I think they are a run first. Team. I okay. Mean, anytime you have a, a, a premier talent like Derrick Henry in the backfield, you're going to utilize him as best you can. And so they, they are very committed to the run, um, probably more so than any team that we've played against. And where they find their strengths at is off the play action after you've come down and allow uh, Marcus to make some easy throws, where it's one on one essentially. Um, because the linebackers have flown up because we're worried about Derrick Henry. We can't let him get going because then we won't be able to stop anything and making a lot of great throws, some big plays um, out to A.J. Brown. Um, Delaney Walker gets yeah. open in, in, that, in that fashion as well, and that's what we have to be able to stop. So if we can snuff out this run early and make him not have a clear vision over the middle uh, with counter pass or any play action, uh, we can give him to hold the ball and, and allow our defensive line to maybe get to him. Hey, we had Greg Cosell on earlier in the show, and he said Tennessee is really good when they play action. I think with a guy like Derrick Henry, you know they're going to try at least to run the football. Oh, yeah. And he's so big, you, know, you kind of got to dive in on the, on the line of scrimmage to get him stopped. Right. So that really does set them up for a good play action game. Yeah, and, and that's what it's all about when, you, when you're facing a big, strong back like him is get his feet stopped. Uh, get his momentum stopped because uh, when he gets out in the open, if you know, if you're watching this this at home, you can see how what type of speed he has to get out and, and really do home run hits. And so guys are going to be flying up initially because we know that's their strength. And if they get that going and they're really a two headed monster from the run game to play action, it's going to be a long day for us. As a linebacker, what have you been taught over the years and even here in Buffalo about how to play play action? How to Handle it. What, what do they tell you? What well, are the, the biggest the thing, if you can snuff out the run and, and, and get that kind of eliminated where you're comfortable with it, where, uh, okay, they may not be in, into it as much, then you can be a little bit more slow than you know is what we call it, where you pop your feet a little bit. Maybe you're a tick slower to the run if they do run it, but then as, as far as pass, you can get back into your drops to create a little bit of a cover for your corners for some of like those deep overs or, or deeper in-cut routes that we call digs. Yeah. Um, just to put a little bit of indecision into the quarterback's mind whether or not he wants to throw it versus a clear path. What, what are we talking about? A tenth of a second, right? Which makes a big deal when yeah. you try to rush a guy. You know, even from a pass rushing standpoint, or, you know, a tenth of a second, if a quarterback holds the ball longer than 2.4 seconds, we expect Jerry Hughes to be at least affecting him, not necessarily sacking him, but affecting him. So that tenth of a second makes a big deal as far as me getting a hand on him, making him feel uncomfortable, where he feel like he may have to move or shift, and where maybe I get a sack on him. Uh, makes a huge difference as far as um, our pass defense and our rush. What's the thought on how well the Titan offense played last week against Atlanta? They, you know, they they're two and two. They were. One and two going into last week, and they kind of had a little explosion. Little yeah, explosion against Atlanta. What was the difference for them? Do you think um, the play action deep game? I mean, mm -hmm. I you know when, when you're so run conscious or oriented, I don't I don't know if they really want to just go down the field methodically on you. If they get those big chunk plays, which we you know we really harp on, is is not giving any team up any big um, explosion plays. But if you give this team explosion plays with that run game, it really energizes uh, what they're able to do. I would say secondly. 
if we can get them into where they feel like they have to drop back, and, and we're about to start kind of getting into some of my um, the low-down notes here, is score, score early to where they feel like, okay, well, we can't, we can't just keep handing the ball off. We got to th- make this a, a drop-back pass game will definitely help us. And I think in the Atlanta game, they kept it close, unlike some of the games prior where they lost and they felt like, okay, well, we got to start dropping back. Or they still wanted to try to run it but couldn't really get anything done, and that's why they ended up losing. Bills linebacker Lorenzo Alexander with us to give us the lowdown as the Bills get set to play at Tennessee on Sunday. We do this every Friday at 2 o'clock. The lowdown, let's get into it. Your keys to the game. Your first one, I, I think a lot, I see what you've written. It reminds me of that old cartoon, We Have Met the Enemy and It, and it Is Us. Because it's almost yeah. the story of the Bills here the last right. week or so. Anyway, yeah, right? yeah. Um, you know, just eliminating self-inflicted wounds. You know, whether it's, you know, turnovers, giving up big plays, special teams. You know, obviously we gave up a block punt last week. We had a big return, I want to say, in, the, in the, at least two of the first three games. One got called back. And those things come down when we watched the film. It was more us and, and not them. And so we have to be able to operate on a high level because let's remember, last year we, we created three turnovers, and it still came down to a possession game. And so now we're going to be down there at their home field, and if we have any, any penalties or turnovers, it's definitely going to make it that much harder to kind of overcome and, and win the game. And then also you said this as well, this number two on the lowdown was score early, get off to a fast start. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that's just huge for everybody's confidence. I think anytime you have, you know, turnovers or you don't play well on offense, you, you kind of become hesitant in some ways, like second-guessing yourself. So I think early success, um, running the ball, obviously what Frank has been doing, getting some Josh, some play action, some easy throws, getting that thing rolling early and then having some fruits of your labor, not – not fumbling the ball when you get in the red zone, but either kicking a field goal or a touchdown really gets your confidence going to, well, okay, we back in this thing. Let's start clicking and not um, second-guessing yourself what sometimes can happen when you don't start as fast as you would like. And one of the things about the Bills team this year, this year's version, constructed around a really more than solid defense, when you score early, it, it really compounds the pressure you can put on the other team on both sides of the ball. All of a sudden, yeah, they start calling plays different. Uh, making plays different, trying things differently because they feel like, wow, now only we got to score against this really good defense. Now we're behind. Yeah, you know, we're behind and we right. might have to score, you know. More uh, than anybody's more than been able, able to. to. Right. right. And so maybe you get out of your rhythm and make some uncomfortable. And that's why I say and having that success, some long drives, scoring early, especially touchdowns, will really help the defense as well as far as pulling Titans out of their offensive game plan. But Murph, and, it's like going down two to nothing against Dominic Hasek in goal. You know, you're just not going to You're not, you're not gonna coming score. back. You're not no, scoring that over. Many, you're not going to score that many goals. Uh, your third lowdown, your third key, uh, pretty basic, but it, you've done it really on defense, dominate the line of scrimmage, huh? Yeah, and it, it just comes down to stopping Derrick Henry. I think we have to be able to control the line of scrimmage. Um, like I said, knock people back um, and make Derrick Henry stop his feet or make a cut earlier than he wants to because if he can hit the thing downhill, man, I, I ran into this dude. and So I know people don't want to run into him. Because it's going to be a big collision because he's a big man, and he gets stronger as the game goes on just because of his size, his power, and his tackle. strength. Yeah. It's kind of a big-name offensive line. They spent a lot of money on Roger Saffold. They mm-hmm. got the, the former first-rounder uh, back in the lineup this week, Taylor Luan. They've got some names. Luan, there's some names up there up front, right? Yeah, Sounds I mean, like. and they play well. Yeah. Um, and so, but, I, you know, I, I, I'll definitely bet on our guys any day of the week, and that's why it's going to be a, a four-quarter physical game because, like I said, Derrick Henry gets stronger as, as the game goes on, so we really have to keep it on. Why did the – Falcons struggle with them last week. I mean, you watched um, that film, right? Yeah, I mean, I think the he... biggest thing was the, the, just the play action, the play action game, um, because they really were trying to come up and stop Derrick Henry. And then you also have some uh, gap integrity, as you can see today. Guys just not in their gaps. And anytime you give a, a good back like that, he's going to find the hole. And then he's only to your secondary. And, and most corners and most safeties – don't want to tackle a right. guy that's that big coming at them. They, they kind of yeah. they they give it an effort, but they're like, please, somebody come mm-hmm. and hit this dude. I know it's a it's a big <laughs> cliche in the league where you get guys they get better in the fourth quarter, they get stronger in the fourth quarter. And really, the 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 problem with that is a guy like Derrick Henry. It's not that he gets so much better; it's that guys really do get tired, tired of, of hitting, hitting him. him. Yeah, they get tired of tackling that guy. <laughs> right. They know it's going to really hurt. hurt. Yeah, and it's hard to jump into that meat grinder. Yeah. So as the game wears on, you get. You know, Vince Lombardi said, "Fatigue makes cowards of us all." Exactly. So yeah, when you get tired, analogy. you're yeah. just you're. It's hard to jump in and tackle a guy that size right. late in the game. Yeah, especially when you know what it's gonna feel like. So right. that's why it's that's why it's great for the offense to score early, for us to stuff that run game early, so they get away from it. 
<laughs> hey, um, <laughs> you know, I know the times we had you on the show during the offseason, I bet every time we asked you, Lorenzo, 2018 Bills, number two ranked defense in the league. You're number two right now. Yeah. But it seems better. And I wonder, in your perspective, we're only four games in, what have you learned about your Buffalo defense for the first quarter of the season that maybe you didn't know going into this? Um, I would say that we're resilient. Um, early on, we, we're much more mentally tough because last year – We'd have lost a couple of these games early. Yeah. We'd have just kind of fell apart um, mm-hmm. because we were put in some bad situations and, and something bad would have happened. But I think a lot of that has to do with guys being there in the second year, especially Tremaine, um, his calmness, uh, putting us in good situations, and guys are just executing. And we have, I think we're a deeper team this year, too. Tremaine and Matt Milano are starting to get some, raise some eyebrows at how well they're playing, especially Tremaine. Right. Um, I mean, just what is it? Just more of the same from last year? What What do you see now as being a guy? Because I see him now way on, on the other side of the scrimmage, line of scrimmage a lot more this right. year. Right. It's just about understanding where you fit. I mean, any time that you're thinking when you play and you know this, guys slow down. And you're like, man, he, he runs much faster than this in practice. Or when he's doing scout team, he's so much better than this. But then you put him in a situation where they have to think. It slows slows you down and takes your athleticism away. And that's what some of that progression was with Tremaine last year. And now that he understands what, he, what we're doing, he understands the concept. So he's not really thinking about it anymore. It becomes a second nature. And now he, he can see the flow of the offense, how they're attacking him. And now he's much more downhill, much more physical when he gets to guards and throwing guys off and making some plays, having tackle for losses, getting his hands on balls. And this is going to continue to progress and get better the more and more he understands the game of football. And so, like, I, I, and I keep saying this, he's going to be the standard probably here next next year three and year four for him. He's going to be like, man, I need – how do I, we get a Tremaine Edmonds? Who, who's the next Tremaine Edmonds? we got to start drafting right. a guy that looks like him. Yeah. Right. I got another of your defensive teammates to ask you about, a, a veteran guy. Um, and I don't put a lot of stock into analytics, but, man, I came across this this morning. Uh, Micah Hyde had a oh, huge yeah. interception in the end zone, right. huge play last week. But uh, opposing quarterbacks' passer rating against Micah Hyde's coverage is like 34-something. I mean, yeah. he might be one of the top three or four safeties in the game right well, now. Well, it's not too many safeties that can cover like him. He may be the top cover safety in the league. Most guys can play, play the deep field, but let's remember Michael was a corner at one point in time too, played yeah. nickel, played in the slot. So he's been dealing with guys like this for a long time, going back to when he was in Green Bay. And he has great ball skills. And, you know, those PFF stats can, you know, lead you on one. But he's been balling like that since he's gotten here. Yeah, right. Um, he probably had, you know, a down year from people statistically last year. But that was because the first year he was here, he was picking everything off that right. people threw at him. Right, so right. he's a dominant player. Uh, him and I think uh, Poyer get underlooked or undervalued yeah. nationally. But that's everybody here in Buffalo. We have some great guys. And he's going to continue to get better, continue to raise eyebrows. And, and if we continue to win, he'll be a guy that'll be in the Pro Bowl very easily. It's funny you mentioned about Poyer. I had the same conversation this morning with Coach McDermott, and I realized when you ask any Buffalo Bill coach or player about one of those two, they the talk about one. the other Yeah, game. you have to. <laughs> right. Yeah, you have to. He, he, you can't Sean did it. He wound up yeah. talking about Poyer. <laughs> yeah. Why is that? I, and I'm not discounting Poyer. I know he's great. Yeah, I mean, they, yeah. Just, they, they do everything together. I mean, they're literally, I mean, like the Splash Brothers, they're li- literally brothers. I mean, you can't have – you know, salt without pepper. I mean, you just can't. You can't have peanut butter and jelly. You know, you, right. you they go together. Gotcha. So at last, thing, you you gave us kind of the whole team things like you know, going to knock out the self inflicted wounds and score early and mm-hmm. get a fast start and stuff. What about just on your side of the ball? What do you guys? What's your keys for this game? Uh, Derrick Henry. I mean, yeah. preventing him from getting loose. I Derek's mean, the engine. He's the engine that makes everything else goes yeah. on that team. And then I think obviously keeping uh, Marcus in the pocket because he does have the ability to make right. some big plays with his mm-hmm. legs because he is very mobile. Um, and then lastly, make him pay. I don't think they have any turnovers this year. They've put the ball on the ground, but the, uh, the opposing they team hasn't it. been. But they haven't yeah. lost it yet. So we have to figure out a way to take it from them. And then that'll really, right. you know, start maybe getting them out of some of the things that they may like. Got yeah. one more question for you about a team at opposite side of the ball. And you, you are, you know, you played long enough. You are a bit of a football historian and you're in the game well no you know well frank? you're a relic that's what, no. uh, yeah but frank gore yeah, that's my guy man <laughs> right man, Fifteen thousand you know. yards only four guys have ever done that it's amazing it's amazing you know what i grew up a 49er fan um so i got always got a chance to watch him from afar my uncle's a huge he loves he loves frank more than he probably loves me that's how much, that's how good of a football player frank gore is uh but Everybody loves him, loves his, his mentality and his energy that he brings into the building every day. And for a guy to be able to do that to sustain at 35 when they call you old at 30 playing that position, <laughs> I, I mean, it's just amazing and inspiring. 
Yeah, they call you old all the time, and you I just agree. it rolls yeah, right yeah. off your back. It's right, okay. yeah. Me and him are cut from the same cloth. You know, he, he got he God made him made him a little bit better than me, but uh, you know, <laughs> definitely made with the same material. Yeah, that's great stuff. Great Lorenzo, stuff. thanks for this. Good, Good luck, luck this Sunday. weekend. Yeah, I appreciate it. Lorenzo Alexander with a lowdown every Friday at two. Steve and I coming back. One Bills live from the Seneca Studio. This is Buffalo Bills Radio.